Good morning, Sunday morning. So why am I vlogging? I don't usually vlog on Sundays, but today is a little bit of a special one. First of all, I'm heading to Home Talk, which is what I do every Sunday. But then at 11.30, heading to the Department of Justice to meet Ayala Chaked, the Minister of Justice of the State of Israel. Super duper pumped to meet her. Just a very promising and uh, intriguing politician in the Israeli landscape. Hopefully be able to get her on camera. I actually haven't spoken to her or heard her speak in English for a very long time. But I did interview her partner, Naftali Bennett, a couple of months ago on the vlog. You can go and watch that on YouTube. Very excited to meet her. And uh, later on this afternoon, meeting a new VC in the Jerusalem landscape, so I'm pumped about that. All in all, it's enough of an exciting day for me to bring my camera on Sunday. Let's do this. Because I never vlog on Sundays, you almost never get to see the incredible, incredible offices, team and company that is Home Talk. Home Talk basically sits in Jerusalem and uh, it's probably the most diverse team I've ever seen. They have millions and millions of users. And a complete market leader in the DIY space, owning the market and doing it bootstrapped. Lots of things going on with this company. Been working with them for years. Big, big fan. The offices are amazing. <laughs> from the home talk office is ridiculous. If you wanna be with me. Ideal droning material. I've done my fair share of droning from this porch. Always incredible, starting to rain. Leaving home talk now, heading to meet Ayala Chaked, the Minister of Justice of Israel. Her office is in East Jerusalem because that's where it was established basically since the mandate, since 1948, uh, which means I'm not driving, taking a cab. Not exactly the best place to park a car. So I'm cabbing it and uh, be with her in like 45 minutes. Looking forward to meeting her and hearing her thoughts about many topics. Made it into the office and I got through security, which is always intense in governmental offices. Now trying to find her office. It is 11.45 on a Sunday morning and to say that I'm honored to be sitting in this room is the understatement of the century because there are, and I'm, I'm gonna, you'll forgive me for saying this, you can close your ears Ayala, but I shouldn't call you Ayala, I should call you uh, Minister Shaked. Is that okay? Whatever, Minister Ayala, Shaked. Also fine. Okay, so I, I, you can close your ears because I'm, I'm gonna embarrass you a little bit, but there are, there are not many people as fascinating as far as I'm concerned in the Israeli political landscape as Minister Shaked. I'm serious. Like, I, you know, I posted, I just told you, I posted on Facebook around an hour ago, 90 minutes ago, saying that I'm meeting you. If anybody has any questions, I, I mean, I just want to show you so you see with your own eyes what I'm talking about. This was an hour and a half ago, okay? Let me show you this. This is the craziest thing. Here we go. I posted this. I said, look what it says. Meeting Ayala Shaked Charlie, what should I ask her, okay? <laughs> look how many, look how many comments. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Look at this. Keeps going. Keeps going. So it has an hour and a half ago. Strong Facebook page. <laughs> it's people. People. No. People are fascinated. Some of the questions are are ridiculous, but 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 they they point to something that is very interesting, which is that it almost doesn't matter what a person's political opinions are. They have a tremendous amount of respect, and they're very intrigued by you. And um, you know, it's it's fascinating to watch. And I, of course, see eye to eye on many of the things that you and Aftali and Caroline and the rest of you are amazing. You guys put together an A team, by the yeah. way. Big Caroline Glick fan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, why am I talking so much? All right. Let's start from the beginning. Way in the beginning. Who is? Can I call you? Is that sure. okay? Sure? Mm -hmm. It's okay. My, my father's going to yell at me that I called you that, but who is the yellow checkhead? Give me the background. The background? Yeah, wait, what's your story before you got into politics? <laughs> a computer engineer. <laughs> okay, I love that. Uh, yeah, uh, I was a computer engineer, but my heart was always in, uh, in the political life. You grew up here so, in... So, yeah, I grew up in Tel Aviv. Okay. I was a regular girl from North Tel Aviv. All my youth, I was uh, very involved in the scouts. The scouts was all my world. After that, I went to the army and served in the Golani troops. Cool. And actually, in the Golani troops, I uh, met the modern uh, Orthodox, the Zionist uh, modern Orthodox. Okay. And uh, that's it. Afterwards, I went to university, studied electronic engineering and computer science. Wow. Suffered in university. Really? Yeah, it was very hard. What did hard. you study? Uh, electronic engineering Where? in Tel Aviv University. Beautiful. Yeah. 
you um, know, Golani's making the news lately because BB said what he said about, or he didn't say, he says he didn't say it, but he did say mm -hmm. it. It's the whole thing, whatever. Okay, anyway, yeah. we're, not gonna, we're jump, jumping ahead of ourselves here. Okay, mm -hmm. so, but you, so you actually have a background in tech. Yeah. How many years were you working in tech before you entered the political arena? I was working in uh, Texas Instrument for uh, six years, wow. and then I left to Netanyahu. I uh, worked with Netanyahu a year and a half. Then I went back to TI, worked for, again, an uh, additional four years, and then entered politics. Love it. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in. Mm -hmm. Get to the, I have a couple of big questions for you. Literally, I'm telling you, I have hundreds of questions from people on Facebook and Twitter, but I made myself a little list, not that many. I'm gonna jump into the, the heaviest question, okay? You and Naftali decided to, I don't wanna say break away, but start your own movement, okay? And I would like to know, first and foremost, who is your target audience for this movement, the new right? Who, is, who are you targeting? Everyone in Israel that believe in our values, we definitely target to the right-wing camp. And we are a very ideological uh, movement, um, right uh, from a political point of view, right from, uh, right from an economic point of view. You know, both Naftali and myself came from the private sector, from the high-tech industry. There are not many politicians who came from uh, the high-tech industry and uh, the private sector. And that's, this is why we are very uh, business-oriented against regulation, Love free it. market. We are, you know, I, I see myself, I see Naftali and I as the high-tech industry defenders because sometimes the government wants to put her hands yep. on the industry and I think it's very important to keep it free. Everyone wants a piece of the action, obviously, because Israel in terms of technology and innovation is, we know, mm -hmm. leading the way. And, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, so far, if I'm looking high level without getting into the, I think the government does good. I mean, whether it's the right. innovation authority and a lot of support, mm -hmm. and that's good. We just have to make sure it stays that way. But yes. okay, so, so you're saying, I mean, you're targeting everyone, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, you're right. So you, in theory, you know, you, you started a new party that in theory is competing with your old party and, you know, Likud. Why should a person vote for you and not for Likud and not for the Baita UD, et cetera? What's the, yeah. what's your differentiator? Um, not for Likud, it's easy. You know, Netanyahu, um, when he was sitting with the Udbar, or with Sipi Livni, he was uh, promoting uh, left policy. When he sits with us, um, he promoting a uh, right policy. Okay. So it really depends what is the structure of the coalition. Uh, also in our uh, party, there are um, amazing people. It's true. Um, very ideological, very um, sharp, very clean, and I think that um, very diverse, you know, orthodox and seculars, women and yep. men. And I think that, you know, if you are a white wing person that believe in free market and uh, in our values, definitely we are, we are the, the, the home. Okay, now I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead, maybe to a little bit from my world. As a marketing guy, as a branding guy, and this is one of the questions someone asked on Facebook, but is a great mm -hmm. question, and that is you called yourself the new right. Mm -hmm. From a branding perspective, yeah. in five years from now, you're still gonna be the new right. Why would you name the party new? I mean, you understand my question? It's not always gonna be new. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, it was just a few days that we had to take a decision. Maybe if we will hire you, you would have given us a <laughs> have to hire me. <laughs> better, uh, better option. Uh, okay. Um, we want really to emphasize the fact that we are right. We don't, you know, put right. customs like other parties is the trying to do Okay, so then, since we're talking about branding, and I'm, I'm sorry that I'm running, I have so many things I wanna ask you, and I, I know you're, I'm trying to be respectful of your time because you're kind of running the country here. So let me ask you this, from a branding perspective, this is a heavy question, it's very timely because it just happened in the whole world, literally, I think I got 50 people asking me this question to ask you, this perfume thing, okay? I mean, you did a, you did a commercial, and I get it, I get what you were trying to accomplish, and I get you know the message that you were trying to convey, but when I saw it, I immediately, instinctively, in a second said, oh, we are in big trouble here, the BDS, they're gonna use this against us, and you see, in the commercial, it's very well done, by the way, produced super professionally, that you're spraying yourself with perfume that says fascism, right? And <laughs> I, I, I get it, okay, but really, like, I mean, did, 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 did whoever came up with this concept not realize that it would, it would be abused and by our, by our enemies? Like, No, actually, we, we didn't think that it, was, uh, that it would be abused by our enemies. We thought that it's very sharp and uh, transferring the message. Um, and also, I want to, to tell you that I'm not um, going to decide what I'm going to do um, according to the BDS uh, actions, and I'm not going, you know, to do other things because the German di didn't understand our sense of humor. It is humoristic and sarcastic movie and I think that after this movie the Arabs will never call me fascist it again okay it's a good point Let's I didn't see. think about that <laughs> no, it's definitely I mean listen there's no question that it was well done and well produced I'm, I'm just a little bit scared I mean I read what the, you know BDS and everyone yeah. was saying but you're right why should we yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not you going know, to, to act you. according to their plan. Okay, I hear it. That's a good point. It's a fair point. Um, but but uh, let me just uh, point blank. Like, mm -hmm. you don't regret making that video? No, not at all. Okay. That was my question. All right. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about the actual issues at hand here because, and I don't want to get too political right now because nobody even knows my political opinions, but the courts in Israel, mm -hmm. which is, that's under your jurisdiction. You're the minister of justice. Um, and I think it's pretty uh, objectively factual that the, the courts in Israel are leaning left. Do you agree with that assessment? Do you think the courts are leaning left in Israel? You mean the Supreme Court? Yeah. Um, I think the Supreme Court is, uh, it's not a matter of left or right, but it's a matter of very liberal and right. activist compared to conservative. Okay. And in, in, in Israel for many years, the vast majority of the judges that were nominated were liberal and activist. So how do we change that? And I, I start to change it. I had the opportunity to nominate six judges out of 15, and I definitely uh, push to nominate uh, conservative judges and also to put the discussion on the table, like it is in the U.S. You know, in U.S., Republicans nominate uh, conservative judges, Democrats nominate liberal judges. It's a well-known fact. In Israel, it was always, you know, under the table. I put the subject on the table. I said we should be like the U.S. I'm the Minister of Justice. I'm from the conservative camp, and I'm going to push to nominate conservative judges. All right, well... I mean, do you think that this thing will, I mean, hopefully you'll continue doing the amazing work that you've done. How do you see the judicial arm, if that's what it's called in, in Israel, um, in let's call it 10 years, I'm not asking you in 50 years. How, how do you think this has changed in terms of the trend of where it's going? How do you how do you envision it in 10 years from now? Okay, so for 40 years, um, the way was always for the liberal camp, you know? It was um, <clears throat> the courts got more and more, more and more power, took themselves more and more power. They interfere in more and more governing decision and Knesset legislation. I tried to shift it, to push it for more conservative path. And there is right now in the Knesset, um, I think um, even majority of people that think that we need to do some changes. And I hope that in the next Knesset we will have a majority also to change basic law that will enable us to legislate uh, the override uh, paragraph, for example, right. and like changing the, the picture. Love it. Two more quick questions, mm -hmm. okay? First question, something that's close to my heart. When are we gonna start seeing Sundays in Israel? Sunday's off. <laughs> Actually, I spoke about I, I, I spoke about it uh, about it with uh, Bennett a um, few months ago when we were in the government, and it's really huge question whether the business sector will support it or will be against it. Because you know, if we will do a day off in Sunday, then we will work only four four and a half right. days. Lose productivity. Yeah, and Bennett told me as a CEO, I don't know if I'm really. I hear that. Uh, really want, wants it. So it's a huge Well, I question. vote for yes, but yeah, I hear what that's a... You vote for oh yes. Oh my God, I yeah, miss because, Sundays. Yeah, because... I've been here 25 years and I still can't get used to working on Sundays. That's my opinion. <laughs> Last question, again, very close yeah. to my heart, is in terms of the world of innovation and tech and Israel being a technology leader, mm -hmm. objectively, how do we maintain our advantage from a legal perspective, from a justice department perspective? What are you going to do, you know, hopefully in the next Knesset, uh, with a with a significant um, you know community or, or people that have supported you, what are you going to do to make to make sure that we maintain our advantage in the world as a technology leader? We need not to interfere. The government should not interfere in the in the in the high tech sector. We need uh, to keep uh, the the tax the, the tax will not be high or do some reforms. You know because sometimes the tax authority wants to do some changes that can hurt the industry. Right. So we need to keep that they will not do it doing it. We needed to encourage more and more foreign investors um, and uh, to promote the innovation authority. And just, you know, if it's not broken, don't, don't fix it. it. Love it. <laughs> what a great way to end the, end the interview. I cannot thank you enough. I'm, it shouldn't have taken us this long, but I told, I'm telling you what I told my friend Naftali uh, Bennett. If there's anything I can do to help you guys, I mean it. Like Yes, I want that the IDEC industry will know um, that we are their home. You know, we have the Bennett, I think it's is the only uh, politician that uh, built a company and sold it, you know? And really, it was you know, from the startup industries. I think it is, is the only one. Right. And I came also from the private sector. So I know that the high-tech industry will know that we are their home. Also, for all the Anglos, we have Carol and Glick, which is amazing. 
Big fan, big fan. Yeah, yeah. So vote for the Yamina Chadash. Yamina Chadash, the new right. I love it, and I really appreciate your time. And just if anything pops into your head or you're talking to enough talent, you say maybe Hill can help with that. You let me know, and keep keep doing what you're doing. And thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye bye. Now to meet a guy named Shai Kavis, I believe is his last name, who is Cyber Guild Ventures. That's about all I know. He reached out. We have a thousand mutual friends. He seems to be doing some interesting work. So I'm meeting him. That's about it. We'll see. Maybe camera. Maybe not camera. We shall see. After all these years, in Jerusalem, meeting yet another interesting, and that's to say the least, entrepreneur doing something remarkable. What's your name? Shai Kavas. Shai Kavas. So we have like 8,000 mutual connections. We got Spiro, we got Ben. Who else connects? Who else do we know in common? Any U.S. Uh, speaker. Any English U.S. speaker. Yeah, we have like a million. All right, so uh, <laughs> several, several people may have mentioned to you that we should be meeting. Yes. So we finally met. That's good. Well, where are we? What is Cyber Guild? Cyber Guild is an early stage uh, VC. Yeah. Um, we're investing mainly in cyber, but we're also doing another unique thing. We're basically nurturing and building our own startups here, growing them and identifying what are the next gaps mm -hmm. in the market. Okay, so I, I, I was a little, I'm, I'm still a little worried that I'm leaving this meeting and like I just got a new enemy because <laughs> I like <laughs> ripped you apart this whole meeting, but it's all out of love. I think uh, it's an interesting concept. We're sitting on Jaffa Street, middle of Jerusalem, and you're building a, let's call it a greenhouse for cyber companies. Correct. Right? You're taking these things, you're growing them, you're putting money in, you're putting much more than that. It's a cool model, uh, and you have some big names, some great names on the board, and you have some really, really cool messaging and branding. I, I love the, the tagline. What's the tagline again? Conventional thinking not allowed beyond this point. I love that. I love it. It kind of, well, I always talk about what's the point of a tagline? Get me to say, tell me more. That gets me to say, tell me more. Listen, if there's a cyber company, early stage cyber company, or someone looking to invest in a fund that invests in hot cyber companies, what is the best way to get in touch with you, and what is the best way to learn more about this thing that you're building? Simple email, simple Phone, everything is uh, based in What's the website. What's the website? The website is www.cyberguild.vc. Cyberguild.vc. And what's your email? Shai, S H A I, dot Kavas, K A V A S, at cyberguild.vc. All right, his email's right there, folks. Email the guy. I mean, listen, <laughs> you, just to give you context, because I'm super, super rushed, and otherwise we do a much more extensive interview, and we'll do it next time, but just to give you context of how big of a hotshot this guy is, how many years did you work at Intel? 20 years. 20 years at Intel, like I don't even, 20 years ago I was like in diapers, no not really, but <laughs> anyway dude, listen, fantastic to meet you and I apologize that I okay. ripped you up there, but, but I hope it was helpful. It was very helpful. Really? Yeah. You're not just saying that? No. Alright, uh, we're going to continue the conversation, if something pops in chat that I can help with, well, feel free to shoot me an email, I'll respond like that, um, and yeah, let's just, let's stay in touch, we can do more meetings and hopefully a longer interview, but keep kicking butt and uh, good luck. Okay, Thanks, excellent, man. thank you. Appreciate for... it, thanks for your time. Made it home, look at the skies, amazing. Sunday is usually a low energy kind of get control of my inbox day. Not today. Today was pretty epic. Tomorrow is going to be jam packed, full of geekiness, as is the rest of the week. See you then.